Hello there. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor of ClassicsToday.com, back in the overflow room to talk to you about the best, and I mean the very best, recordings of Rafe, not Ralph, Rafe Vaughn Williams' Fantasia on a theme by Thomas Tallis, his first great masterpiece and one of the all-time great masterpieces for string orchestra, a piece of music that is so beautiful, you cannot believe a human being actually wrote it. Now, the tune that Vaughn Williams took for his Fantasia was composed by Thomas Tallis, and it's actually uh, was written for an archbishop's hymn him book, book of hymns. And I actually know the hymn because, thank God, the Talus scholars actually recorded it. There may be others. And you can go hear them do it if you like. It's on Gimel. And uh, they did all the tunes that, that Talus composed, but not all the verses to all the tunes. This one has words which are almost completely incomprehensible, um, unless you know your sort of Shakespearean or pre-Shakespearean English. It goes, Why fume than fight the Gentile spite in fury raging stout? Well, that's the first line, and if you know what that meant, ha! <laughs> knock yourself out. More power to you. I actually did figure it out. When you look at it, you can sort of tell what they're saying. It's, Why fumeth? Fumeth, you know, you don't want to fume. And if you're fuming, you're fumething. Why fumeth and fight the Gentiles' spite in fury, raging stout? Some him, huh? Anyway, there's more to it, obviously. But that's the opening line. The rest of the tune, you know, it's the one Von Williams used without the words, which can only improve it. So, you know, the, the Talus Fantasia is one of those pieces that every... British orchestra and conductor has done about a billion times, and mostly very, very well. It's a very difficult piece to kill. It has so much going for it, just sort of melodically and in textural interest, that you you can't really destroy it. The only thing you can do is be boring. Now, that said, some conductors have managed to be quite boring. Leonard Slatkin's recording for Telark. Oh my gosh, was that a snooze? Even more surprising was Adrian Bolt. I don't think he ever quite got this piece. His performance was slow and heavy-handed and and very, very, uh, you know, it, it never acquired the degree of passion that the music requires in its central section. I mean, you know, this is a very, very romantic, passionate piece of music, and it rises to a absolutely transcendental climax, you know, but Bolt never quite got there. And a lot of a lot of conductors never quite get there, even though most performances of it are very good. Another one who never quite gets there is Neville Mariner, who recorded it about 450 times, you know, for various, various labels with the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. His performance was always basically kind of swift and light and transparent, but it totally lacked that, that, that crescendo of passion that has to carry you through the central climax, you know, crescendos of passion, you know those? So, uh, you know, I, we're going to talk about some recordings here that may surprise you because these are not going to be your usual run of the mill. Well, a couple of them are, but most of them will not be. And I've only chosen out of the about 350 quadrillion available, I've only chosen five because I'm looking for performances that are spectacularly great and also distinctive, that don't just sound like everybody else, that aren't just nice, pretty, well-played, well-recorded. You know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, there's just so many of them. And, you know, you can get them and you'll like them. They're probably fine. But I wanted something that when you hear it, you sit up and you go, aha, now that's something special. And these recordings are all special in one way or another. The, and two of them are mono. This will, this will surprise you, I think. The first, the first, the, the first sort of mono special is, of all people, Herbert von Karajan. This is with the Philharmonia. He did this in mono, and it is gorgeous. I, I like this performance because not only is it incredibly beautiful, but it's sort of the first example we have 
of that rich, string-laden, vibrato-laden, warm, passionate carrion sound. Now, the sound itself is absolutely gorgeous. The performance is quite flowing. It's not too slow, but carrion does not reach the apex of passion at the climax. And I think the reason is because it's carrion. I mean, you know, he always preserves the basic beauty of tone, no matter what. And this is perhaps the first example of that happening on disc. It's not a performance that everybody will love, but you have to acknowledge that it is special and not perverse. I mean, I, I want special, but I don't want perverted. It's really very hard to play this music in a perverted way. It doesn't, it doesn't really, really succumb to perversion easily. You know, it's also, I was thinking, uh, I did that talk you know, quite recently about new seven modern concerti grossi, and I left out the Von Williams concerto grosso because it's not a very interesting piece in my opinion. But, you know, this piece is much more of a concerto grosso than that one is. You've got two completely separate and unequal string sections, plus a bunch of soloists, a string quartet. I mean, it embodies the concerto, the concerto grosso principle really quite splendidly, while not being a concerto grosso, obviously. The next version, and this is the absolute, total, complete, utter, opposite of Carrion. Could not be more opposed. I don't mean the string playing is unlovely, but I mean talk about heights of passion. Dimitri Metropolis with the New York Philharmonic. Boy, do we need a Metropolis box. Anybody listening over there, Sony? This is a hot, hot performance. It's probably the fastest ever recorded. He gets through it in under 13 minutes, and it doesn't sound terribly fast. It just sounds urgent. And that climax, holy crap, it's absolutely, it's hysterical. I mean, I mean, it's, it's one of those, I mean, Metropolis was kind of a neurotic, twitchy conductor, even in his calmer moments. And in this performance, he just goes wild on the piece. And I'm telling you, whether you think you know the work or don't know the work or whatever, if you're, if you, you, you have my prime recommendations, of course, which you, of course you have. Uh, you absolutely have to hear the Metropolis. It will it will give you an entirely new perspective on the work. I guarantee it. Next, here is perhaps the most. Let me see what else we. Have. Oh yeah, perhaps the most um, obvious standard version. If you want to have a combination of nobility and passion, with passion winning over it, where it needs to, no one's going to do better than. Barberoli. This is that famous, famous disc. It was called English Music for Strings or English String Music, whatever it was called. It's got the Elgar introduction in Allegro, also possibly the best performance in the universe of that, and the Elgar Serenade, uh, the Elegy, Suspiri, and then the Von Williams Talis Fantasia and the Fantasia on Green Sleeves. Barbaroli never made a finer record. Never, ever, ever, ever. Look at it again. There it is. It's unbelievable. He did it basically with the Sinfonia of London, and it is glorious. And it's one of the great Talis Fantasias. It's been a reference recording, at least for the English press, since like the day it came out. And rightly so. Rightly so. I am not criticizing. Sometimes they really get it right. And especially when you can have choice among English performers with English orchestras of English music. <laughs> then, then they're in their element, and they get to pick the one they like the best. But Barbaroli's is absolutely spectacular. It's a stunner. However, there are two others that I want to talk about that I think you really need to hear. The other one, and this is this is a slow one like Adrian Bolt's. It is on that level of tempo, but oh, the passion is there. And all of that, that warmth and luscious sonority that Bolt seems not quite able to really revel in is there. And it's Stokowski on EMI. I mean, this is really, this was one of those weird little Stokowski discs that nobody ever knew about until they issued it on CD. It's also got the Dvorak Serenade and Stokowski's version of Dido's Lament, When I Am Laid, in Earth, that is. And the, the, 
Vaughn Williams takes over 16 minutes, which is slow. It's slow, but it's Stokowski. It's got that wonderful, the Royal Philharmonic strings. You know, it's really fascinating. Stokowski just sort of dripped recordings as he went through his career. He just recorded for, with anybody, anything, for, for any label. Really, really strange. And, you know, some of them, you, you, they never seem to appear or they disappear or they, they reappear. This is the great one. Stokowski doing the Talos Fantasia, if you can still find it. I, I think it was also reissued on one of those Newton classic things at one point, but you should hear it. You know, there, Stokowski also recorded one of the great sequels to the Talos Fantasia, if you get a chance to listen to it. It's only been recorded, I think, twice. It was it, It's by an American composer named Thomas Canning. C-A-N-N-I-N-G. Canning. I'll spell it down there. And the work is called... Uh, a fantasy on a hymn tune of Justin Morgan. And it is absolutely the Vaughn Williams Talus Fantasia played sideways. It is such a transparent ripoff. It's so funny. And it was, it was last coupled um, on Everest, you know, Stokowski's Everest recordings with his Richard Strauss stuff. You know, it was like Till Oil and Spiegel and Don Juan and some other things and Salome's Dance, I think. And it had this piece the Thomas Canning Fantasy on a Hymn Tune of Justin Morgan. If you get a chance, give it a listen, because it's really a hoot. You'll have quite a laugh when you're done. However, now we come to the moment you've all been waiting for. The best, the most stupendous, the most stunning, the perfect combination of nobility and passion recorded in the most gorgeous acoustic that's absolutely perfect for the piece. The guy who would always bring home the bacon in music like this. And I'm talking about Silvestri, Constantine Silvestri. Now this disc, this disc, this is the big box. It, you can still get it separately. There's like a two disc Von Williams set that has some of his other stuff. He did the Wasps Overture and he did, remember Elgar's in the South? I mean, it was just, it was all so great, just great. I may have the single disc over there in the Elgar pile, but Constantine Silvestri's Talus Fantasia is unparalleled because it has that wonderful, gorgeous, noble, fabulous, medieval sort of acoustic. The sound is so beautiful. But then at the climax, he really, really just cuts loose. I mean, that was Silvestri's gift. You know, he had that ability to bring this passion and intensity to everything that he did. And of course, all of you have the Silvestri box, which really deserves a talk all by itself. But I can't because if I did a talk about the Silvestri box, I would be going, oh, this is great. That's great. This is great. That's great. This is great. That's great. What's the point? It's great. <laughs> Get it? It's all great. So I'm telling you now. And in this box is the ultimate Talus Fantasia. I kid you not. These other ones that I've mentioned, they're beautiful. They're fabulous. Metropolis is completely distinctive. Carrion's is Carrion-like. The Barbaroli is a reference version for all time. Stokowski is Stokowski, and they all have their distinctive qualities. But I think if you're going to get just one as your reference around which you can play off these other versions and, and evaluate their pluses and minuses best, you got to have Silvestri. Absolutely Silvestri. He's your man. No, wait, stop. Hold everything. I got so excited talking about Silvestri, I forgot the other version of the Talus Fantasia that you absolutely have to hear. I can't believe it. I must be losing my mind. Ormandy with the Philadelphia Orchestra. Let me just get right to it, you know? Nobody pays any attention to Ormandy in British music, especially the British. There is no better playing in the Talus Fantasia than this one. This also has all of the sonority, the gorgeousness of Carrion, the, the, with it's faster and more intense than Stokowski. It has the passion at the climax and string playing that will probably never be equaled in the rest of the human lifetime on this mortal orb. Got me? I am not saying it's better than Silvestri. It isn't. 
because Silvestri, I still think, is unique. But to ignore Ormandy, who recorded this twice, the Sony one, the earlier one, is the one to get. He did it again for RCA, actually quite well. But, I mean, this is this is the one when he and his orchestra were at their absolute prime. So I'm awfully sorry I left that out. Now, let's go back to our regularly scheduled program. So that's the story with the Talus Fantasia. And then when you're done with it, see if you can track down Thomas Canning's Fantasy on a Hymn Tune of Justin Morgan and give yourself a little chuckle. Keep on listening, folks. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>